I can prattle on about Aaron Rodgers all I want, missing two days of minicamp, but why don't we bring in a Super Bowl champ who's been in minicamps and knows what it means when somebody's absent. Mark Schlereth joins the herd. Mark, happy Father's Day weekend to you. Uh, let's start with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, a lot of the media members make it a big deal out of him not being there. Um, you've been at all the mini camps during your career. I don't know. What does it mean when your quarterback, right. your leader, just is a no-show? Well, I mean, I, I don't think that's ever a good look. And depending upon what Aaron Rodgers had planned, what his, you know, what his excuse was, how he worked through it with the team, um, let's face it, all the chips have been pushed in the middle. Aaron Rodgers is everything to the New York Jets. They are banking on Aaron Rodgers being healthy throughout the season. Look at the beginning of the year. They've got six, I think, primetime games early in the season. Um, it's all about Aaron Rodgers and his ability. Now, if you went, if Aaron Rodgers addressed the Jets and say, man, I've got this thing I cannot miss, da 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 uh, you know, I, I've, it's been on the books for a year, didn't have the minicab schedule, sorry, I'm going to go do it. I, I think if if that's the case, then I don't think it's that big a deal. And they know all their hopes of being a champion, all their hopes are are saddled on Aaron Rodgers. And you look at it last year, as good as that defense was, and they were exceptional last year, when Aaron Rodgers went down, their season was over. They know that. And so as long as they're okay internally with it, and I think the players are okay with it, because Aaron does a great job of building relationships with his guys he does a great job of, of leading his guys. I just don't know what the circumstances were in regards to, mm. uh, you know, what was what was addressed and why he's missing this, uh, you know, why he's missing this time. All right, one more on uh, Rodgers real quick. But in all your time, Washington, Denver, just being in the league, can you ever recall a quarterback having so many, shall we say, outside interests? This isn't like a quarterback who likes to go fishing or hunting. This is a guy who was right. up for being a vice presidential candidate. I, I don't know, Mark. It just strikes me as a little odd and different, maybe just because we've never seen it before. But I don't know. Uh, John Elway was not this kind of guy. Uh, your quarterback's well, in Washington. John, I just, Elway, I John Elway had seven seven car dealerships yeah. while he was playing. He was managing car dealerships while he was playing. So, I mean, he, he had things. It just wasn't the social media aspect mm. of it is one of those things. Now we're more aware of some of the other interests. But I guarantee you this, sitting down with Aaron Rodgers and having meetings with Aaron Rodgers before you call a Packers game, there's nobody more dialed into the game plan. There's no money, nobody more dialed into what defenses are trying to do to him. There's nobody who's more engaged in football during the football season than Aaron Rodgers is. So, I, I mean – I understand he's got some quirkiness to him. I understand he's super intelligent. I understand he's got other interests. But I, I guarantee you this, when he is ready to play, when when they are in the season, when he is preparing for that, that's what his focus solely is on. So I, I don't I just don't have a lot of a lot of concern mm. for a guy who's done it the, the level that he's done it at for, you know, into his he's what, forty years old yeah. now. Um he if he's healthy, the Jets have a great chance of winning that division. If he is not healthy, they have no chance of winning that division. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Uh, all right, let's Trevor, let's move to Trevor Lawrence. Five years, 275 mil, a lot of guaranteed money. Uh, you know, again, uh, you don't want to judge the online takes, but people don't think Trevor Lawrence has earned this. They're like, well, CJ Stroud must be worth more. Jordan Love should get more money. Uh, Mark, just tell the people, Trevor, you're not getting paid on what you did. It's what you can be, right? Well, yeah, you're getting paid for what you've done to this point. And then obviously, you know, you get into a position where this is not a quarterback desperate league. It's a quarterback deprived league. <laughs> and so if you've got one that you think passes what I like to call, you know, this is a Joel Cladism, uh, the confetti test. Well, then you're going to have to make a decision at some point um, on paying that guy. And so they feel in Jacksonville that this is a guy that can take them to the promised land, that can win them a championship. I guess, you know, the difference between a really good quarterback and an elite level quarterback is um, the elite level quarterbacks tend to cover warts, right? They're like compound W, like they just absolutely cover the warts of your football team. And you're going to have warts on your football team when you pay a guy a large percentage of your salary cap. So can he overcome the deficiencies on your team to lead you to the promised land? Right now, I would say Trevor Lawrence has proven to be a good quarterback. Mm. But is he a war cover? 
No. And they're banking on the progression that he will continue to get better and better and better, and he'll be able to cover those warts. But at this point, I look at them defensively. I think they're really a talented football team. But will he be able to cover whatever offensive warts they have? That remains to be seen. Um, but that's the market, right? I mean, I, I understand you haven't won playoff games. You haven't, you know, competed for a division cha- or for a uh, for a uh, conference championship. You haven't gone to the Super Bowl. I understand the complaints there, but that's the market. That's what everybody's looking for. Um, and and sometimes you're going to sign a guy just because there's nobody else out there. I don't think I don't think that's in the same categories like Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones feels to me. Like I called it, I called it an Eeyore contract on my podcast, right? Like, <laughs> oh no, we got to sign our quarterback. Uh, there's nobody else to sign. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the Eeyore contract. I don't think Trevor Lawrence fits in that category um, of we've just got to do this because there's nobody else. We've got nowhere else to go. Yeah. All right. We could wrap up with the, the Patriot way. A lot is being made in New England. We're not going to do things the way Belichick did them. You know, we're going to bring in this rapper to throw passes in the offseason. That's cool and fun. And look at this. Um, I don't know, Mark. Patriot Way kind of sort of worked for two decades. You know, the rigidity, right. the militaristic attitude of Belichick kind of sort of worked. I don't know your thoughts on the Patriots. Well, it worked because you had guys within that organization that allowed it to work. I mean, Brady could sit in a, a team meeting and get yelled at by Bill Belichick uh, like I could find a you know, I could find a quarterback from Foxborough High School could do what you're doing. You know, you know, he could chew him out. He had the Teddy Bruskies of the world. He had guys that he relied on to be able to take the brunt of that criticism during the course of a team meeting. And then all the young guys had to fall in line. Like, if you're going to shout out Tom Brady, if you're going to cuss him out, then I've got to be able to take that as well. And when you start losing those guys, you know, you don't have that prevailing attitude of, of you know, everybody's got to be – you know, going to fall in line. So uh, I would say that that's probably more more the reason that you're moving off that militaristic way um, because a lot of the players of today aren't going to handle that well because you don't have those guys sitting in there taking it like Tom Brady and Teddy Bruschi and some of the other great players that played for Bill Belichick in the organization. All right, great stuff. Mark Schlereth, uh, two-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Bowl champ. Thanks a lot. Enjoy Father's Day weekend. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.